my name is Mari Carmen Eroles and I'm with Communication Services and we're here to talk to you today about a heart healthy diet. And we have Jennifer Gillen, who is a registered dietitian with our Food and Child Nutrition Services in Dallas ISD. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh no, thank you for being with us. This is really important information as we try to eat healthier, and have uh, better lives and a more productive life. So do you suggest that that's, it's good to go shopping with a, a menu in mind and to really sit down and prepare what you're in your mind, what you're gonna do for the whole week? I think that that's really how we all have to do it. Looking at the grocery store prices now, you have to go into it with a plan of knowing you know, what you're gonna have for dinner, what you're gonna have for breakfast, what the kids are gonna take to school for lunch. If, if that's the way you do lunch in your home. So it's best to consider those things, think about it. I, I can give a personal example. One thing that I do is I prepare chicken over the weekend, no matter what, chicken can go into <laughs> everything, <laughs> everything, salads, sandwiches, a wrap. Um, and all it's gonna take is a few fresh vegetables and fruits and I've got a whole meal. And so you do wanna consider how can I prepare those foods at home to make it easy for me during my busiest times um, to make healthy choices. And it's best if you don't do those things when you're hungry. Sonny, I'm Hispanic, and I know that a lot of the foods that are traditional foods tend to be a little bit higher in not the great fats and also in, in sodium. And um, how do we prepare dishes like, like beans or, or even greens without adding that extra sodium? How can we still keep the recipes that we love that are traditional in our families, but make them healthier? Sure, and, and I'll be honest with you, you know, it is an adjustment. Um, a lot of those recipes do call for processed meats that we might not be using as part like of. Ham like ham hock? Like ham hock, right? For our heart healthy diet. Not exactly in line, but smoked turkey might be a different option that you could use to incorporate some of that flavor using our favorite uh, seasonings and spices, peppers, onion, fresh garlic, those things to flavor our favorite foods, making our salsa at home, not buying the salsa in the jar. Um, those are things that we could do to reduce the sodium content, to reduce some of the fat that's not good for our heart and our diet. Um, using avocado oil or avocados even in our meals incorporates heart healthy fat so we do have options um, but there are, there is an adjustment right. to our favorite foods but making it home is making it with the love and care and um, that's really what we want for our families for them to feel nourished and loved and cared for by the food we make and we could do that for them by reducing the amount of salt not not adding those foods that we know could be of concern if we're trying to follow a heart healthy diet so I'm trying to eat a healthier diet. Mm -hmm. So I am watching what I eat and my meals. I eat three meals a day. I try to keep them balanced, mm -hmm. but I find that sometimes I'm still hungry. So what can we do in those meals or even as snacks to avoid being hungry? Because we all know when you're hungry, you make bad choices. <laughs> so what can we do to make better choices and, and to keep us from being hungry? Fiber. Fiber is your friend when it comes to feeling full. So fresh vegetables, whole grains, whole wheat products, um, increase the fiber intake in your diet and that helps you feel full, it helps you slow down when you eat. You mentioned being hungry and not making the best choices. And typically when we're hungry, we eat very fast. But when we eat fiber, we kind of have to slow down. If you could think about eating a salad, eh, you can't eat a salad that fast. You have to take the time to chew, <laughs> chew it very well so you can swallow it. And that's the fiber component. It's the, the part that helps our stomach feel full, gives us great digestion, but also can slow us down when we're eating. So sticking the fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, that'll help you. And for example, replacing white rice with brown rice that has more fiber and it's just better for you. Exactly, exactly. The less processed something is, the better it is for you. Tell us about what are some of the not so healthy fats and what are some of the healthy fats that we can substitute those with? Sure, so some of the not so healthy fats. If you think of the marbling on a steak, right? It's what makes it taste good to us sometimes when we cook it. 
But how something is at room temperature often is also how it is in our body. And so that would be the fact that we'd be concerned contributes to clogging our arteries or some of those complications that can come with heart disease. Um, and so you wanna avoid any fat that's attached to um, animal products, if you will. Choosing a lower fat milk is an, another option to reduce the fat in your diet. Going for the low fat cheeses. Again, a lot of the unhealthy fats or saturated fats, if you will, are tied to animal products. And so choosing those lean cuts of meat really impact our diet when it comes to heart health. And also adding maybe nuts, uh, using an avocado oil sure. instead of... Vegetable oil, for example, will give you a better profile of the heart healthy fats. Increase your heart healthy fats if you choose those options. Almonds are a great nut um, to incorporate in, in your diet as well. So thank you so much, Jennifer, for being here with us and giving us this, these tips that are going to be so helpful. And these are tips these are foods uh, advice that is incorporated into what Dallas ISD has in the schools, in the meals that we serve our students. Hopefully you will start doing the same at home and we can all be healthier and really be, have our kids be ready to be successful and to learn when they're in school.